Hey, Fletch, good to see you, man. Um, back at, at the beginning of training camp, uh, Kenny Gainwell tweeted a picture of you two, and the caption was family. Um, I have a two-part question about Kenny. Uh, what's it like having another Mississippi guy out here, you know, knowing that you guys are able to share, you know, experiences and roots? And then my, the other part of my question is, uh, you know, you went up against him a little bit in, in camp. Uh, as a defender, from, you know, your perspective, what, what makes it hard to contain a player like Kenny? I mean, first off, it's really good to have a guy, um, you know, another guy from Mississippi, actually from my hometown. Uh, he went to, you know, the, uh, the high school, Yazoo County. I went to Yazoo City High, but, you know, that's a couple miles down the road, and it was our rivalry. But it's always good, man. I think this young man has uh, been a great teammate, uh, and, you know, he's listened. You know, he listened to, you know, just kind of soaking it in. And the biggest thing for him is uh, he's just kind of just taking it all in, soaking everything up that everybody's trying to help him with. Um, and, he just put his head down every day and go to work. And a guy like that, you know, a teammate like that, you can't do nothing but respect him. You know, he shows up every day, uh, does what he needs to do. Just he just learned how to be a pro, and that's and that you know that's really good coming from. Uh, that's really good for a rookie. This guy just come in and you know do what he's told to do, and uh, he's showing uh, on Sunday and just going against him in training camp. You know, just you know really, um, you know, you can just see you know how explosive he is, how strong he is when you run the ball, and just how effective he he can be, um, and how effective he. He has been, you know, obviously the first game, he's got his first touchdown and, uh, you know, can't be, you know, more happy for that kid than anything. But, you know, more than likely, you know, we're on the same team and uh, everybody's happy for him. Go ahead, Tim, and then Mike. Hey, Fletch, you played uh, 57% of the snaps on Sunday. Usually we see your playing time in the, you know, 70s, 80%, even into, into the 90s. Curious to get your reaction to the amount of playing time you got and, and um, kind of your understanding as to the why for that. Well, I think, you know, uh, as the game went on, uh, you know, I think coaches just being smart about it, knowing it's the first game, uh, it's, it's the first game, and knowing that, you know, hey, you know, you can't just really um, – we were up, and you just can't really put a load on guys, you know, especially when you need them in the fourth quarter. But I think as the season go on, I think that number go up um, as, you know, things start to fall and really get to that, to that you know, the actual game shape of, you know, just playing four quarters. But, you know, as far as that, um, you know, nothing to be frustrated about. It's a great team win, and, uh, you know, you know, I'm happy about it. Go ahead, Mike, and then Zach. Fletch, a lot of what you do doesn't show up on the stat sheet. I was just curious, how much pride do you take in creating opportunities for others on the defensive line? It's great. It's a great opportunity to see other guys making plays, flying around. Um, I mean, I think on Sunday I got a lot of attention, and I expected that going in, going into the game, and that gives other guys a chance to get one-on-ones. Uh, I did miss – uh, we talk about, you know, I, I missed probably two or three sacks out there. Uh, and, you know, that can be frustrating, but you still can't let it affect what you do and how happy you you, you are, happy I am for my teammates that went out there. Uh, it was a big team win, and, you know, everybody flew around, made plays, and uh, hopefully we're doing the same thing this week. With that said, though, um, Hassan Ridgeway has been around for a few years. He's looked really good when healthy it's just been a matter of being available um what what have you seen out of him growth wise the last three years especially from the standpoint of kind of attacking every day in practice this ability just the ability to be disruptive uh, i think when he's on the field there's not a drop off i mean he's played a lot of ball i think it's his fifth sixth year uh he's played a lot of ball so he know what it takes to go in and, and be disruptive and um just just basically doing his job and you know he's really good at it um, and when he get a chance, you know, he's just, you know, getting after the quarterback, playing in the backfield, making TFLs and, and affecting the game. And that's what you expect from a guy like Hassan. Go ahead, Zach, and then Chris Franklin. Hey, Fletcher, we've seen the ends rotate quite a bit in the past. It, it seemed the interior guys were also rotating quite a bit this week. Um, you said you expect kind of the playing time to go up as the season goes on here. But do you think you'll still have as many guys going in and out of the line? in and out of the defensive line as, as you did the other day? I mean, it just, I think it just depends on how the Florida game is. I think that's, that's the part you leave up to the coaches. Uh, and, you know, it just depends on, you know, how, how a guy's feeling and, you know, if a guy need a, need a blow or something. But obviously um, you can't be selfish about it because, uh, uh, like I always say every year, a fresh Milton Williams is better than a tire Fletcher. Um, I, I think I said that for the last few years. Um, so it just depends on how, to get, how the Florida game is going. And, you know, if you really need those guys going, um, the, the starters, like, you know, on the field doing the situation and um, how important it is. And if we're up or we're down, we're battling. You know, every week is, is up and down. So, you know, you kind of look forward to it. You can't be surprised by it when you're on the field more than um, than I was uh, last week. Chris and Dave. Hey, Flash. Well, after looking at the tape and seeing what you saw 
in uh, what did you, how would you set the way that no way of play during the game? Yeah, I can't hear you, bro. Oh, sorry, I was trying to get out. After watching the tape and uh, seeing the way uh, and looking the way uh, on at the field when you were playing, how would you assess the way that Milton Williams played? I think Milton Williams playing good. You know, he made some made some flashes on Sunday, and this this really flashes of a, of, a, of a young guy that's that's got a bunch of ability, um, that that's taking coaching, that's playing hard, uh, and just taking advantage of the reps that he getting in practice and in, in, in a game because, you know, those are valuable reps. Um, so you know, you expect a guy like him to go out there and just perform. And uh, Milton's got, you know, a bunch of raw talent, and uh, you know, once he figured it out, you know, he'll be really special. Go ahead, Dave, and then John. Hey, Fletch, what did you learn from D'Amico Ryans, and is there a story that stands out with him in particular to you? I mean, just his leadership. I think, you know, everybody that's played, for, that's played with D'Amico, you know, had uh, the ultimate respect for, for D'Amico, which I still have the ultimate respect for him. Uh, I think that, you know, his leadership was always there, the good, the good and the bad, and that kind of kind of rubbed off on me that you just can't be a leader when, you know, when things are good. you got to be a leader all the time. And, you know, I'm, D'Amico's, he's just, just a natural-born leader. And uh, you got you got to respect that guy for that. Was he someone that you kind of always thought would be, end up being a high level coach? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, just him playing and the way that he talked and the way that he spoke ball. You know, he 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 made it seem you know like just so simple. But um, you know, he used to say and we used to say all the time that simple isn't always easy. And you know, uh, the way that he coached, the way that he that led, and the way that he explained ball, and he was always got a guy that. At least I could go to and talk about you know just 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 real life stuff, and he was just honest about it, and you know telling you telling me the way you know giving me the way that he would handle things, and which always made sense, you know, and just being a pro about it. Um, so you know, he was always that leader and you know a guy that you can go talk to, uh, you know, on or off the field. So um, like I said, I got so much respect for him. Go ahead, John, and then Bo. Uh, hey Fletch, uh, you mentioned all the attention you get at times uh, gives others an opportunity. Javon really took advantage of that, had one of his best games. Uh, what what have you seen different from him last year when he wasn't that comfortable? He said because of the the pandemic, didn't get to know people. Uh, how mu- how much improvement have you seen from Javon over the summer? I, mean, I wouldn't say uncomfortable. I wouldn't say he was never uncomfortable. He was always happy here. I think the biggest thing for him is he's healthy, and I'm smiling at ear every day once I know he's healthy, uh, because I know how good he how good he is, and I know how good he can be. Um, so that just gives you know just a bunch of guys. I mean, just gives him beside me, just a great opportunity to go out and just show the world, uh, you know why you know why we brought him here, and uh, he's he's special. I mean, kid. I mean, he's strong, and you know can 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 win his one on ones, and you know and that's what you really want. Go ahead, Bo, and then Martin. Hey, Fletch, in the past, you know, you guys would always talk before games and after games about how everything starts with stopping the run. Um, I'm curious this year, not that you are, like, indifferent to the run, but is it less of, like, the number one focus in this defense than it has been in the past? I mean, you always want to stop the run, especially as a a D lineman, you know, because if we don't stop the run, you know, uh, no crush, no rush. If you don't crush the run, you don't get to rush the quarterback. So that's kind (laughs) of – that's kind of how I look at it. That's kind of how I, get, how I try to get the group to look at it and, uh, you know, get the running back on the ground, get teams in those, you know, second long, third long situations, uh, and we get the chance to go rush the quarterback. All right, we have time for two more here. So go ahead, Martin, and then Chris. Hey, Fletch. Um, speaking about rushing the quarterback, you know, against the 49ers, they, you know, they've used two quarterbacks, different styles, and Garoppolo and, and Trey Lance. What are, what are the challenges, uh, you know, for you guys on the defensive line, you know, when they kind of change things up like that as far as preparing for both of those guys? Just being patient, you know, know that, you know, that they're going to be doing different things with, with both quarterbacks, and they may just run their offense with both quarterbacks. You never know. Um, so we just got to be patient and play our, play, our, play our style of defense. You know, at the end of the day, I think it comes down to us versus them. You know, and I don't think it comes down to any kind of scheme. It comes down to who won it who the most. Uh, which, you know, which O-line, it's going to be our O-line versus their D-line. And uh, I think that's our attitude this week. And, you know, we just, that's our attitude every week. I don't think nothing's going to change. You know, get after them. Um, know that they get paid too. Uh, but, again, stick what, to what we're doing on defense. Um, stay patient and know that at, at some time, you know, it's going to come around. Go ahead, Chris. 
Yeah, just to follow up on what Martin was saying, what makes this 49ers offense so dangerous? They seem like they do a lot of reverses, and even though they lost their best running back, is there any what what makes this offense um, dangerous for you guys, to, especially from a defensive line standpoint? I mean, they're able to run the ball. I mean, any offense that's able to run the ball, I mean, that's they can throw it on their own time. You know, they don't have to be forced to throw the ball. I mean, they're good at running the ball. I mean, they're coached very well over there. I um, mean, all line is – those guys have played a, a bunch of ball, even with the addition of Alex Mack over there. He's played a bunch of ball. He's played in that scheme. So um, I think, like I said, just going to be our, our D-line versus their O-line. And uh, we're always excited about that. You know, two good groups going against each other. Um, so um, we'll see on Sunday.